Hi, I'm Randy Altman with Post Perspective. We're here with Telestream's Ian Valentine and Owen Walker. Welcome. Hello. Hi. So uh, we're here to talk about post-production and production and how your tools fit into those workflows. Ian, why don't we start with you and talking about Telestream's Prism uh, product line and how waveform monitors could help those working in post. Let's start with uh, what a waveform monitor can do. A waveform monitor really is an instrument that allows you to to measure the real signal that you're going to ultimately transmit. And so that's what's nice about using a waveform monitor in this kind of environment. And so you look at real signals, you can see real picture, you can listen to real audio, et cetera. Okay? And uh, they can be used for a number of different things, either by creative people who are worrying about color or uh, uh, HDR and exposure, or by engineering teams, if that's really what they want to do. So this is about uh, post. We'll talk more about the creative side and the, the use of a waveform monitor there. And if you think about what people are trying to do in post, it's really all about um, making content that looks great and sounds great. And if you think about what that means then is, is you need to worry about things like exposure management. Uh, you have to worry about color and color management. You may need to worry about audio as well. So there's those sort of three things. I know I've boiled post-production down to three simple rules, but, but basically that's what you're setting out to do. And the question then is, is how does, how does a waveform monitor really help you do those things? And uh, the, the way I would couple this at the moment is if we, if we deal with sort of uh, exposure management, color management, the two main ones here, uh, the thing that's happening actually in the industry at the moment is uh, all there's a big shift now towards things like HDR, high dynamic range, where it's all about brighter brights, darker darks, and being able to see what's happening in the shadows. And then also you have more color spaces from your normal television environment. And more and more people are going to 2020 or P3 color spaces. So now as a colorist, you have to work across multiple color spaces. As someone who's trying to make the picture look great, they have to worry about HDR and how does that look on a screen, okay? And so uh, if you take uh, something like uh, exposure management, a waveform monitor really uh, gives you, it's almost like an exposure meter. You can take all sorts of measurements about the levels of light that appear on your picture using a waveform monitor. Uh, very easy to do. And uh, what becomes really important with HDR, for example, is, is that uh, you can't just bright up the whole screen. It all has to be done with uh, very small percentages of the screen get uh, highlights on them and then your darks, because if you just drive everything bright, it actually becomes a terrible experience for, for the viewer, okay? And so what they need, uh, anyone dealing with that, is, is a, tools that tell them uh, what percentage of the screen has been driven at what light level, et cetera, okay? And so it makes it a lot easier for them to do that. And HDR, you can't just look at the screen and say, yeah, that looks good. You've actually got to do some sort of measurement on what you're doing. And so, there's where uh, a waveform monitor really helps you out. And one of the things that we've done is uh, on, on our waveform monitor, we've realized that a lot of our customers are not familiar with all the sort of traces that we can do, all the green squiggly lines that you can see. Uh, what we actually tend to do is, is we've moved much more towards an image-based type environment. So you look at the picture and we will actually use false color on the picture to tell you where your highlights are, where your darks are, how, how intense are they being driven. It just makes it a much easier experience for anyone who's trying to do that. So from an exposure management, a waveform monitor is a great tool and we can do all sorts of things to help you do it. From a color management perspective, you know, we've now moved into this world of wide color gamuts and uh, you know, billions and billions of colors and everyone wants to see them. So how do you manage to transition from someone who's watching a standard television with a 709 color space to someone who wants to do 4K, UHD, HDR with all the colors? If you're a colorist, how do you work across that? And how do you know what's going on? So again, what we've done is, is we have a set of tools that will help you manage the color. So you can uh, look at CIE charts to see where all your colors are. We actually map all the different color spaces so that you can see where your image lies within that color space, et cetera. So 
again, it's a, a really powerful tool to help you do the job that you're trying to do. And I think I mentioned right at the front, there are a lot of uh, waveform monitors that you can get now as part of your editing systems and various other things like that. They tend to be working with a proxy. Uh, the nice thing about using a waveform monitor connected to your system is, is you're looking at the real signal. This is what's going to be transmitted ultimately. And so that's what really helps. So that's a really quick overview. Uh, all I would say is, is that a, a waveform monitor comes packed with so many features. <laughs> it's just impossible to go into all here, but it, they're really uh, an essential tool for anyone in post. Thanks, Ian. I appreciate that. And um, Owen, why don't you tell us a little bit what Content Agent is and how it is applicable to our readers? Sure. So Content Agent is really designed as a, a workflow orchestration system to help automate um, tasks such as helping to uh, automate ingest into a post-production environment. Uh, and then once you've finished your editing to actually help produce things like uh, the final kind of broadcast masters and, and viewing copies of your show. And it's really helping to offload sort of um, laborious technical transcoding type uh, workflows from an editing system. So it allows the editor just to focus on actually doing the storytelling. So we, we have a, a, a lot of um, tools around helping to do things like uh, automating camera card ingest into an editing environment. So uh, in a traditional sort of post-production house or in a production company, you have to have people sitting at editing systems, editing products with all their camera card readers plugged into the computer manually importing the clips from the cards into their editing environment. And this can be very laborious and it can be uh, costly in terms of human sort of um, resources. But what we allow you to do is, is allow, we have a very simple to use interface, which allows you to pick what you want from a camera card. So we will kind of look at what's on a camera card, display all the clips, allow you to play them back. Um, you can kind of start doing some basic logging. You can mark in and out points. So if you shot something on a GoPro card for, say, six hours, you can just pick the two minutes you really need out of the six hours. And then uh, that connects to our main sort of processing system, which will then you, it allows the user to sort of pick and choose what they want to um, create editing files for. So it'll possibly change the format from whatever was on the, the original camera recording into an editing format which is more suitable for post-production um, so it really allows people to be more efficient in their workflows rather than to employ lots of assistants to sit there for hours at editing systems manually importing files it can be kind of automated so you can you can pick 30 camera cards and kind of come back a couple of hours later and they'll all be ready kind of all ready for editing on your sort of editing system of choice and then Kind of the flip side is coming out of your editing environment instead of tying up your editing system to produce the final broadcast masters uh, content agent can take files directly out of products such as avid media composer and read the actual avid sequence and read the media files natively which are in the sequence and then transcode them into a, a number of different formats whether it's for sort of your local broadcast in your local region or to do some frame rate conversion on the on the, your kind of master files for international deliveries. So it's really sort of helping to automate ingest and delivery processes. So we have a very sort of simple to use intuitive interface to allow non-technical staff to drive the product day to day. So it's, you don't have to be an engineer to drive it. It's very much designed for production staff and assistant editors to use, um, for example. And in, in, in a sort of a news environment, which isn't particularly post-production, but we have people like use, journalists using the product to kind of ingest into their editing uh, environments. Further proof that you don't need to be an engineer to, to use it. it. Yes, exactly. Yes. So we have a very interesting kind of graphical workflow designer, which is like a flow diagram, which allows someone to connect a number of tasks together around transcoding and it also can do things like uh, accelerate the delivery of the files so it links in with WAN acceleration products and it can do things like connect to other third parties um, 
to do things like audio processing, all kind of sophisticated audio loudness correction and things like um, motion compensated frame rate conversion. But we also have the ability to, to use an actual, um, it's not just file based, you can actually play back in a player what um, your, your recordings and do kind of visual QC using a player. And it also has a, an SDI output, which could be connected to Prism. And then you could use your Prism to check the final output, for example. Uh, one nice thing is, is that Telestream as a company uh, hopefully from just this short conversation, you can see that we are dealing, we're, we're very strong in post-production and we, we deal with everything from managing your assets to how you want to condition those, all the way down to measuring, you know, what percentage of the screen is lit up in HDR. So we can really do the whole thing for the, the, the whole job for anyone who's in post-production. That's one of the nice things about working with Telestream to do that sort of thing. Yeah, so, I mean, I should add that as well as obviously looking at visually at a, a waveform monitor. I mean, once you've got contemplation to create your master files for broadcast, for example, you could, you can uh, then run them through uh, an automated process to check the files at a, a, an essence, video and audio essence level and the container of the file level, which is where our automated QC products um, would sort of fit in. So VidChecker and Aurora um, again, which can be fully automated within a, a continuation workflow. So you can have the kind of automated file-based quality control and then visual with Prism. So you get kind of the full, full QC kind of perspective.